I'd like to call the 24th regular meeting of the 2017-2018 Common Council to order. Would the clerk please read the quote for the day? Thank you, Mr. Mayor. No act of kindness, no matter how small, is ever wasted. Thank you very much. Would the clerk please call the roll? There are 16 present. And uh, Mr. Reinflesch is remote. Okay, and, and, and all the person Reinflesch is remote. Um, we have a special guest with us today. His name is Ethan Polanski. Ethan uh, just uh, had his court of honor last uh, week to uh, present his Eagle Scout Award. Ethan, would you please come forward? I'd like you to lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance. He's uh, from Troop 813 from the Church of Jesus Christ of the Latter-day Saints. And his uh, Eagle Scout project was to construct a compost bin at University of Wisconsin Sheboygan for use by the Master Gardeners. So let's give him a hand. <laughs> Please stand then for the Pledge of Allegiance. <clears throat> States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you very much, Ethan. Next, we'll move on to approval of our minutes from our last city council meeting. Alderperson Wolf. Thank you, Mayor. I make a motion to approve. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. Is there any discussion on the minutes? Seeing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passes. Next, we'll move on to resignations. City Attorney. There's one resignation. Uh, Kevin Anderson submits his resignation from the Mead Public Library Board of Trustees, effective March 7th, 2018. Thank you. Alderperson Wolf. Thank you, Mayor. I make a motion to uh, accept and file. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passes. Back to the city attorney for mayor's appointments. Uh, we have two uh, mayor's appointments to confirm today, uh, both to the mayor's international committee, uh, one for uh, Trent Romer, the other for Thomas Michael, both uh, for terms to expire April 30th, 2018. Alderperson Wolf. <laughs> Thank you, Mayor. I make a motion to confirm. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. All those in favor of the motion, please signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion passes. Uh, next item is public forum. We have no one this evening. Okay. Then we'll move on to a presentation by our city administrator, Daryl Hufflin, on the 2018 community survey results. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, tonight I will present the results of the 2018 community survey. Ready? Thanks, Meredith. Um, the survey was developed to, get, to further provide you with an understanding of the views and the perceptions of the citizens. The survey was completed using a survey monkey, an electronic online survey instrument. Uh, some paper responses were also received as those were distributed at the Senior Activity Center and the Mead Public Library. Of the roughly 40,000 city of Sheboygan residents who are 18 years or older, the response rate was approximately 1,200 or 3%. Assuming randomness of the responses, the results are projected to be a 95% certainty with a 3% positive or negative margin of error. Last year, the results were 1,066, uh, which this year is 11% increase. And the first year, 2016, uh, the city received 680. So in two years, we've seen a 75% increase in the amount, in the number of, of responses. With the 95% certainty, this is, this is a typical and, in essence, most common confidence interval for, for a survey. City staff will develop, uh, did develop an outreach uh, program or plan to market the survey and included the following venues. Uh, City-owned electronic message board and monitors, WSCS, multiple city works, uh, websites and social media outlets, posters in shoreline metro buses, and water utility billing statements. Also as part of the outreach plan, uh, the city marketed the survey to the local newspaper 
uh, in local newspaper articles, local radio stations, WHBL and the Hmong Station, Mead Public Library Senior Activity Center, again through computers and paper copies, and also partnering with local community organizations to use their communication uh, methods. The typical survey, typical age bracket was the 56 to 65 uh, was checked uh, as part of the survey and also most frequently checked was residents who resided in the community for 25 plus years. If I were to take the median of those that responded, it dropped slightly to age 52 was the average survey taker. First question on the survey, quality of life. 74% of the survey participants indicated that the quality of life in Sheboygan was either good or excellent. The 74% change really, 74% uh, uh, response in good or excellent really uh, is not changed since uh, 2016. Regarding quality of life, uh, second related question, um, and that is what direction is the city headed? Uh, most response were either the improving or steady uh, for a total of 70%. Uh, this is uh, an increase over 2016 and 2017. 2016, uh, it was 16% lower for respondents in these two categories. So we're seeing a, a, you know, a significant increase over just a two year period of time. For those that indicated declining as a response, uh, 30% uh, in 2018, this was as high as 43% in 2016. So we're seeing a significant change in those that responded uh, to that specific category. Regarding city performance, survey participants were asked uh, to identify the city's overall performance and 63% identified as either good or excellent. Again, this is no change uh, since 2016. Other performance-related questions that the city received good marks were managing the taxpayers' money, keeping citizens informed, delivering services efficiently, and focusing on priorities that matter most to residents. Uh, the green is excellent, blue is good, fair is gold, and poor is greenish blue. For managing the taxpayers' money, in 2018, 46% of the respondents uh, used uh, excellent or good to indicate their, their understanding or perceptions. Keeping citizens informed, 53%. Good or excellent. Delivering services efficiently, 64%. This is a 9% increase just over the past two years. And the last, with double digit increases since 2016, 44% again, identified focusing on priorities that matter most to citizens. And clearly during that time, you as a common council have created a strategic plan and have worked hard to promote those focus areas and, and related projects. <clears throat> Next slide, uh, the top five important city functions. Uh, number one is drinking water, uh, I guess an obvious choice. Uh, tied for second place, three different uh, services or functions, fire <coughs> services, EMS, street maintenance and pavement. And last is attracting and keeping businesses in the city of Sheboygan. It's interesting to note that both the 2018, 2017, and actually uh, the third, 2016, all three years, fire and EMS ranked in the top five for important city functions. Next is the top five rated city services. Uh, 2018, fire services number one, EMS two, tied for third place, library services and police services, and last, drinking water. Fire service uh, was number one in all three years the survey has been performed. In addition, uh, EMS, library, and police have also been in the top five for all three survey years. There is a significant increase uh, in one that's not identified as part of the top five services, and that is street maintenance. From 2007, just this last year, from 2017 to 2018, there's a 9% increase in respondents who identified good or excellent for this category 
again, I think people are noticing the efforts within this department. For top five rated city departments, there's a tie for first place, fire and Mead Public Library. Second is police, water utility, and rounding out uh, in fifth spot, uh, public works. The top, these uh, top rated departments for 2016, 17, and 18 uh, four of those five uh, were in all three survey years, fire, library, police, and water. In prior years, public works uh, um, existed in two of the three years. Top-rated city departments. Uh, this one uh, I found particularly interesting in that uh, we saw not... Uh, a change in the num in the departments that are listed, but we saw a significant change in the ra overall rating by our residents as far as a poor, fair, good, or excellent rating. You can see, you know, fire is red, library is green, blue is police, water is purple, and public works is uh, an orangish color. In 2016, uh, the ratings range from two to three, which is just above fair. In 2018, in two short years, the numbers are hovering around 2.8 to 3.3, or solid in, in a good rating. So again, I think our residents are noticing a change. Communication. This year, we expanded the uh, options for residents taking the survey. There were 30 options as far as where citizens could receive information about our community, specifically our city. Uh, of the top five, uh, Sheboygan Press, number one, city website, number two, uh, My Sheboygan, number three, Sheboygan Sun, four, and WHBL Radio as the fifth. The top five, top four sources have not changed over the three-year period. So consistently, it's been the press, the website, the Sun, and, and WHBL radio. Uh, in 2017, uh, through the mayor's office, a citywide newsletter was distributed. Already in its first year, it's number 11 out of 30 options for, of communication vehicles. Next is, of those who have an opinion, um, funding sources for services. Uh, the number one is increase user fees and charges, but do not increase property taxes. The second is, and that's in gold, blue is use of a combination of increased property taxes and user fees, but do not increase uh, property taxes at 33%. So in one year, uh, there was a 14% increase in those that said use user fees only, do not raise taxes. Uh, for the category of cutting services this year, only 11% checked that box. Uh, that's a 12% uh, decrease over 2017 results. As a special question for the 2018 survey, there were two questions associated with the city's logo and branding. The first question was, are you satisfied, somewhat satisfied, or somewhat dissatisfied with the logo? 81% identified either somewhat satisfied or very satisfied. The second question related to what are identifiable important assets that the city should incorporate into a logo. Of those that responded, 62% identified Lake Michigan as that asset that should be represented in a logo or the city's branding. <coughs> Next, we had several questions that were open-ended. And I think all those responses have been printed and placed on your desk. We've created a, a sort of a word block. Uh, the larger the font means the more often that word was incorporated into the responses for 2019-2020 projects or initiatives. So armory, streets, roads, uh, downtown uh, were most often cited in those answers. Typical responses uh, for the armory, uh, no surprise, were either keep it, replace it, uh, or make a decision. For roads or streets, needs more work, needs more repairs. Downtown, more businesses needed. Uh, for parks, uh, invest in the parks. And last, housing, 
it was mixed where some people said we need more apartments, uh, some people said we need less apartments. This, the last open-ended question was just overall comments that uh, survey takers wanted to share with you as, uh, to you as common council members. Again, uh, this word block identifies those most commonly uh, cited um, streets, the armory, uh, business overall, housing, and again, fairly consistent uh, responses similar to the prior question. It's interesting that last year when the survey was taken, it was sort of in, during the height of the deliberation or discussion by you as a common council and really the community over the Kohler golf course and annexation. So last year, uh, the golf course kind of dominated a lot of these open-ended questions. This year, uh, again, no surprise, the armory weighs heavily in these comment uh, questions. The timing for the survey, uh, if you recall, was purposely moved up. Normally it occurs in June or July. It was moved up into um, February or March. Uh, the reason is that we could share the results with you as we head into the mini retreat that will be held on Monday, April 23rd. Uh, this is gonna be held at the Senior Activity Center. Uh, we hope uh, all who are present, uh, plus the public and of course the management team, uh, will be there to help us update as part of the strategic plan, we have specifically action items. So of course, we've had 2017, 2018 action items. So now it's time to come up with 2019, 2020. So as, the, uh, as your management team begins working on the 2019 budget, we can begin to incorporate uh, those action items as well as as they finalize uh, for, your, for presentation, for your consideration, the new five-year capital improvement plan. Uh, again, this information that I've shared with you tonight will be uh, placed on the city's website if it hasn't already. Um, again, we plan on continuing this survey. Uh, next year is our third year, which will be more comprehensive. And again, it, as you recall, all the questions are first vetted through the Finance and Personnel Committee. We, we will be doing that next uh, December or January. And again, uh, because we're on cable, uh, I want to extend my appreciation for all the citizens who participated in the survey as a small enticement. Uh, we do identify that uh, those that participate in the survey and are willing to put their name forward, uh, we do have a $100 chamber check gift card, and uh, James Neiman, uh, in fact, was that winner. And he had a picture taken with the mayor uh, this past week. Uh, that concludes my presentation. Uh, normally, we, uh, in the past, we've done this presentation at a community of the whole. Uh, knowing that your time is valuable, I did not want to uh, have you to come out just uh, to hear me talk about the uh, survey. Uh, so tonight was the most opportune time for me to share with you the results. Uh, any, any questions? Elder Person Sorensen. Two, two quick questions. Um, first one quick, you said April 23rd is the mini retreat. Um, if I'm not mistaken, don't we have a council meeting that night as well? It will be back to back. Okay. Just and, we'll check on that. and we will hold that meeting at the Senior Activity Center. Okay. Um, and then the, the questions regarding the, the, the changing of the logo, um, it, it seemed like from, from a lot of the, the data that was presented that a lot of the citizens overwhelmingly suggested like, that it's okay right now and that they're satisfied with it. Do you, what do you feel like is the next step regarding that moving forward? Do you want to keep it as is? maintain it, but where do you think the city should be heading in that direction with the data that was received? Uh, no change. That's all I got, thank you. Anyone else? Alder Person Boren? No, I have no, okay. All right, thank, thank you very you. much for that report. Next we'll move on to mayor's announcements. Um, First of all, I'd like to remind all our residents that their pet licenses uh, renewals are due by March 31st. So every cat and dog in the city needs a pet license. And on April uh, 3rd, we have our spring elections. And preceding that, we have some candidate forums scheduled this week at the Mead Public Library in the Roca Room. On 321, districts uh, 2 and 5 will be held at uh, 6 o'clock and 7 o'clock, respectively. On uh, 324, um, 
districts 10 and 7 and 9 will be held and those will be in the morning uh, district 10 at 9 30 district 7 at 10 30 and district um, 9 at uh, 11 30 and these are being put together by the uh, American Association of University Women and the Sheboygan League of Women Voters so we thank them for organizing those and then there will also be some uh, held for the county uh, district 1 and 10 on 324 in the afternoon at 1 o'clock and um, there will be another one for Sheboygan area school district candidates on 326 at 630 and uh, on Good Friday, City Hall will be closed except for our clerk's office. Uh, they have uh, uh, early voting going on every day from 8 until 5. And on that particular day, they're only going to be open from 3 to 5 p.m. for early voting. But if people would like to come early in the day, they can call ahead and make an appointment, and they'll be open just for that appointment. And um, coming up soon, there'll be the Coastal Young Professionals event coming up. And uh, I'd just like to recognize uh, Alderman Person Sorensen. He's uh, up for nomination as the Young Professional of the Year. And Alder Person Savaglio is up for the Young Professional Volunteer of the Year. So congratulations on those nominations, and we'll see how you guys do. Uh, next, we'll go on to hearings. The uh, first hearing will include items 2.1 through 2.4. That's a hearing numbers 11, 12, 13, and 14 of 17, 18 for confirming, confirming the exercise of police power and making an assessment for those benefited properties against which assessments are proposed for parking assessment districts 1, 2, district 4, and 5. Is there anyone here to be heard? Is there anyone here to be heard? Is there anyone here to be heard? Alder Person Wolf. Thank you, Mayor. I make a motion to close the hearing. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Hearing's closed. Next hearing is 2.5. It's hearing number 15 of 1718 to amend the city of Sheboygan's future land use map of the city's comprehensive plan in order to change the land use classification of the property located at 3226 through 3302 of Superior Avenue from multifamily residential to community mixed use. Is there anyone here to be heard? Is there anyone here to be heard? Is there anyone here to be heard? Alderperson Wolf. Thank you, Mayor. I make a motion to close the hearing. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. All those in favor of the motion, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passes. And item 2.6 is hearing number 16 of 1718 to amend the city of Sheboygan's official zoning map to change the use district classification of property located at 3226 through 3302 Superior Avenue from class urban residential UR12 to class suburban office SO. Is there anyone here to be heard? Is there anyone here to be heard? Is there anyone here to be heard? Alderperson Wolf. Thank you, Mayor. I make a motion to close the hearing. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. All those in favor of closing the hearing, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passes. Next, we'll move on to the consent agenda. That'll include items 3.2 through 3.14. Alderperson Wolf. Thank you, Mayor. I make a motion to accept and file all our O's, accept and adopt all our C's, and pass all resolutions and ordinances. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. Is there any discussion on any of the items in the consent agenda? Hearing none, would the clerk please call the roll for passage? <clears throat> Sixteen eyes. Motion passes. Next, we'll move on to communications. Items 4.1 and 4.2 be referred to the Public Works Committee. Under reports of officers, items 5.1 through 5.14 will be referred to various committees. And under resolutions, items 6.1 through 6.6 .6 will be referred to various committees. 
Under reports of committees, item 7.1 is RC number 261 of 1718 by the Finance and Personnel Committee. To whom was referred resolution number 148 of 1718 by all the persons Donahue and Boren, authorizing a transfer of appropriations in the 2018 budget and recommends passing the resolution. Alderperson Donahue. Thank you, Mayor. I move to accept, adopt, and pass the resolution. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. Is there any discussion on the motion? Seeing none, will the clerk please call the roll? Sixteen eyes. Motion passes. Item 7.2 is RC number 262 of 1718 by the Finance and Personnel Committee to whom is referred resolution number 149 of 1718 by all the persons Donahue and Boren authorizing the purchasing agent to enter into a contract for the relocation of the data center from City Hall to the wastewater treatment plant and recommends passing, passing the resolution. Alder Person Donahue. Thank you. I move to accept, adopt, and pass the resolution. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. Is there any discussion on the motion? Seeing none, will the clerk please call the roll? <clears throat> 16 ayes. Motion passes. Item 7.3 is RC number 263 of 1718 by the P Public Works Committee, to whom was referred resolution number 151 of 1718 by Alderperson Wolf, authorizing the appropriate city officials to enter into a contract with Vinton Construction for the North Third Street Force Main relocation for $423,805 dollars and 83 cents and recommends passing the resolution. <coughs> Alderperson Wolf. Thank you, Mayor. I make a, a motion to accept and adopt and pass the resolution. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. Is there any discussion on the motion? Seeing none, will the clerk please call the roll? Sixteen eyes. Motion passes. Under matters laid over, item 8.1 is RO number 299 of 1718 by the City Planning Commission, to whom was referred General Ordinance number 39 of 1718 by all the persons drawn in Rindfleisch for an ordinance amendment uh, amending the city's future land use comprehensive plan to change the land use classification of property located at 3226 and 3302 Superior Avenue from class multifamily residential to class community mixed use classification and recommends that the approval of the general ordinance. Alderperson Bellinger. Thank you. I move to accept and file and pass the ordinance. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. Is there any discussion on the motion? Seeing none, will the clerk please call the roll? Sixteen eyes. Motion passes. Item 8.2 is RO number 300 of 1718 by the City Planning Commission, to whom is referred General Ordinance number 40 of 1718 by all the persons drawn in Rindfleisch and RO number 228 of 1718 by the City Clerk for an application <coughs> from Derek Lemahue of Abacus Architects for a change in the zoning classification of property located at 3226 and 3302 Superior Avenue from Class Urban Residential UR12 to Class Suburban Office SO classification. It recommends approval of the general ordinance and the RO. Alderperson Bellinger. Thank you. I move to accept and file and pass your ordinance. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. Is there any discussion on the motion? Seeing none, will the clerk please call the roll?
16 ayes. Motion passes. Next is other matters received after the agenda was published. City Attorney. 9.1 is an RO by the Director of Planning and Development submitting a request uh, from the Director of Planning and Development accepting $20,000 in sponsorship contribution from Plenco towards the 2018, 2019, and 2020 City Independence Day Freedom Fest celebration. That will be referred to the Finance and Personnel Committee. 9.2 is an RO by the City Clerk submitting various license applications for the period ending June 30, 2018, December 31, 2018, and June 30, 2019. That will be referred to the Law and Licensing Committee. Alderperson Wolf. Thank you, Mayor. I make a motion to adjourn. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. All those in favor of adjournment, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? We stand adjourned. Thank you for your attendance tonight. <laughs>